All right, so this video is going to address something that I've been asked by a lot of people, which is why I don't use OpenBSD, or at least why I don't use OpenBSD on the desktop and make a bunch of content related to that because I do use it for servers. This here is one I messaged into that I've updated to uh, 7.1 recently. Um, I made a video like a year ago talking about why I was looking to start using OpenBSD instead of, or at least in conjunction with Linux servers. One of the strategies that I've pretty much settled on is using OpenBSD on the perimeter of a VPC, like having it set up as a reverse proxy slash firewall. Um, and I think I did make a video where I set up a desktop environment on OpenBSD, like in a virtual machine or something like that. But you'll probably never catch me actually using OpenBSD as a daily driver on a desktop or a laptop. And it's because I don't really think that OpenBSD is meant for that. So I'm on OpenBSD.org. This is their official website. This is the front page. And for example, the word desktop doesn't show up anywhere. Uh, there's no pictures of somebody using an OpenBSD desktop on the website. There's no pictures of OpenBSD with a desktop environment or with window managers. There is a picture of a rack-mounted server right here, which I presume is running OpenBSD, uh, but still no desktops, no GUIs, nothing like that. Now compare that to something like Linux Mint, which yeah, like if you didn't know anything about Linux Mint, like if you just randomly went to linuxmint.com one day, and you looked at this, you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, this is for a desktop operating system. It's very obvious. Or even if you went to, uh, what is it, arcticslinux.org, right? So we go to ISO releases. And look, there's releases that come with a desktop environment already set up. Uh, for OpenBSD, we don't have this option. So even though it is possible, of course, to set up a desktop environment and use OpenBSD as a desktop, I mean, I've, I've done that, at least the first part, setting up the desktop environment. Um, but all of this lack of indications that it's a desktop OS um, kind of clearly tells me that it's not. And if you are someone who is able to run OpenBSD on a desktop successfully, then you're a bit of a hacker. And mind you, a hacker is not necessarily someone who just puts on a black hoodie and sells ransomware on the dark net. Uh, no, I'm talking about the OG definition of a hacker, which is a skilled person in information technology that uses their skills to achieve a goal or overcome an obstacle by non-standard means. So basically, it's someone who makes technology do things that it wasn't necessarily meant to do. Like if you install and play Doom on a graphing calculator, you're a hacker. If you install Linux to a Nintendo DS, you're a hacker. And if you install OpenBSD to a desktop and use that as your daily driver, then in my opinion, you are a hacker because I just don't think that OpenBSD is really meant for that. I think it's more meant for servers and not the desktops. And let me be clear, I don't have anything against anybody who wants to use OpenBSD on their desktop or anywhere really. I really don't get this infighting that there seems to be between some Linux and BSD users. Like we really shouldn't be fighting a brother war. We should be getting together and shepherding people away from using proprietary operating systems. But something you should know about OpenBSD, if you're considering using it on a desktop, is that there's limited support for Wi-Fi. I mean, you know, desktop, people think of a tower, but on a laptop, that might be a big deal to you. Um, limited support for Wi-Fi, there's not support for Bluetooth, there's very limited support for device drivers in general, like graphics cards, peripherals, uh, things like that. You can't install Steam, and you can't install a lot of other software without using ports, which could compromise OpenBSD's security, which is probably the reason why you chose OpenBSD, which is considered one of the world's most secure operating systems in the first place, instead of FreeBSD, which is actually meant for desktops. Look at that. We see it right there on the front page of their website. So if you can get OpenBSD working as a desktop OS, then more power to you. I mean, like I said, I consider you a hacker, which most people uh, consider a huge compliment. 
but don't go hitting up the devs of OpenBSD to try to include support for Wi-Fi 6 or for Bluetooth or a lot of other desktop things in the kernel. I, I highly doubt that they're ever going to do that. And if they did, it would actually piss off a lot of uh, open BSD users like myself because Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on a server is retarded. Uh, this is the reason why I started switching part of my server infrastructure, at least the internet facing things over to OpenBSD in the first place because on Linux servers, well, let me actually just show you. So this is a, a Debian server which I had, uh, I was going to use for email, but I guess this will be a quick rant within a rant. Volter refuses to open SMTP port 25. So I gotta find a different hosting provider for email. Um, I, I do still think that Volter is great for everything else. And I might just throw uh, my affiliate link in this uh, video as well. So that if you sign up, you can get some credit to the account and so will I. Um, that's probably a big reason why I like Volter, to be honest with you. Uh, but as far as the technical stuff goes, they're pretty great. It's just, I don't know, for some reason, within the past year or so, they've started refusing to do the needful when it comes to using email. So if you want Volter for email, then don't use my affiliate link and don't use Volter, use something else. But anyway, let me show you my uh, kernel config of this OpenBSD, or excuse me, of this uh, Debian box. And let me show you Bluetooth, okay? So remember, this is a server, this is a VPS. And as you can see, Bluetooth, all the different configs related to Bluetooth are either um, built in to the kernel or they're um, a module. Uh, same thing, like if we keep scrolling through here, I'll probably find a bunch of other wireless things that we just don't need. Um, let's see, yeah, so near field communication, right? This is another thing that's just, there's no reason to have this on a server, but yet it's built in there. There's tons of things in this kernel that I just don't need for a server. And if I was using Debian on my desktop, uh, then I would have the same deal going on. I would have a bunch of server things in the kernel that I wouldn't need on a desktop. And Debian is not the only distro that does this, okay? Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch, most distros ship with a really generic kernel and customizing the kernel. I mean, you can customize a kernel on any distro, but generally it's not part of the process when you're setting up your distro. Um, they all come with these really generic kernels that do a lot of things that you don't need them to do. Also, most people using a Linux box, whether it's for a desktop or a server, they're not using a hardened kernel. So in case you didn't know about this project, there's another kernel, like another version of the Linux kernel called Linux hardened, which has dozens of options uh, that we were just looking at changed to reduce the attack surface. So really good stuff probably a great thing to use to further enhance the security of your VPS or maybe even on your Linux desktop. But almost nobody does this. Almost everyone is just using the generic version of the kernel that ships with their operating system. And maybe if you use a distro, I can't even think of any off the top of my head that ship with uh, the hardened kernel by default, but maybe if you use a, a distro you know, the few people that are setting up a VPS with that kind of Linux ISO are using the harder kernel. But most people, they're probably using Debian, they're probably using Red Hat, something like that. And it's just generic Linux. And don't get me wrong, the kernel is really not a huge security concern. I mean, as long as it's updated, okay, don't get me wrong. If you're using like version four or three or something crazy like that, that should be a concern to you. But if you're using an up-to-date or an LTS kernel, um, I wouldn't really lose sleep over having modules enabled that I don't need because it's really unlikely that yours or anyone else's VPS is going to get hacked that way from a vulnerability in a kernel module. Attackers are gonna go after the lowest hanging fruit. They're gonna go for things like unsecure SSH, uh, unsecured C panels, or like if you're running WordPress, they're gonna go after the people who have outdated plugins or outdated versions of WordPress, Django, or whatever uh, server applications you're using. 
it doesn't change the fact though that the Linux kernel is very large and insecure compared to OpenBSDs. And that's why if I'm gonna have an internet facing box that people are going to be scanning, people are going to be trying to break into and do all kinds of dirty things to my poor little VPS. I want it to be running the most secure operating system in the world and have it do only what I want it to do. But my desktops, they're not openly accessible from the internet. So my main concerns with them is things like the web browser or potentially with email, right? Like I should not be clicking on links and, and uh, you know nonsense that's in my email box. Uh, there's some security overlap between servers and desktops, right? Like I still use very strong passwords on both. I still use encryption on both. But for the most part, my approach to securing servers and desktops is pretty different. So don't hold your breath waiting for me to make open BSD desktop content. But if you do wanna watch desktop BSD content and maybe learn how to use open BSD on the desktop for yourself, let me show you some content creators that can help you out with that. So. Uh, this is Zany Zani, um, not exactly sure how to pronounce his name, but he makes a lot of OpenBSD desktop content. Like we search for desktop, look at all this. He's got a new computer and a new rice, which I think you can also download. So if you wanna just like copy his config, which actually does look pretty clean. I, I watched like a couple of his videos um, just to see. And like, you see, he's got these long, maybe they're live streams or maybe they're just recordings. I don't know, but he's got, Obviously, tons of desktop OpenBSD content. Uh, and then we've also got root BSD, so same thing. And this person clearly went to the Mental Outlaw Academy of based thumbnails, because just look at this. He's utilizing the Apus and the anime girls expertly. This guy, he, you know, he he might be able to teach the class himself. And he's also got an Odyssey channel. So look at that. We don't even have to watch him on cringe tube. We can watch him on base tube. See, look at this. So you don't have to show Google that you're learning how to use open based on the desktop. So go forth and consume desktop open BSD content from these guys. They're, they're actually small channels. So, you know, definitely uh, go show them some love, both uh, Zany and root BSD. And um, like I said, I'm using it on the, on, for servers, like kind of on the perimeter of a VPC. So maybe I'll do some tutorials for OpenBSD once I've got things set up how I like them. Maybe I'll show you guys how to uh, use it as like a reverse proxy or how to use it as a VPN server. Uh, maybe I'll do some PF tutorials, but it's gonna be, you know, dry, boring stuff. It's not, it's not gonna be cool. Uh, desktop stuff or like gaming on OpenBSD or anything like that. Like and comment, attack the algorithm. Subscribe to me on Odyssey. Have a great day.